Welcome to this lecture on warnings. I'm Dr. Corey Facleris at the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. This lecture helps meet the second learning objective this week, which is to understand current best practices in security communication. Security or privacy warnings are common interfaces. We see browser phishing warnings, untrusted site or SSL warnings, wireless security warnings on an untrusted network. When we see these when we're downloading software, downloading and opening files from the internet, where malware or virus is detected, where a firewall or antivirus is not running or out of date. When we log in, we log in and we see messages then we're logged in from a new machine. And sometimes there are pattern type warnings when passwords are detected on other sites. The question is, does the receiver notice and understand the warning? Here's a humorous example of an actual message where the developer wrote something that made a lot of sense if you're technically inclined. And what they want them to do, especially if they want them to check their certificate, but especially cancel if, for instance, this is, an, is there gonna be a risky situation. But what the end user gets is this basic idea, something happened and they're trained through lots of notifications over a lifetime. You need to click okay to get on doing things. So in this case, this was not a successful communication. That leads me to the three goals of a warning. First, to help users determine whether they are actually at risk. Second, to stop users from doing something dangerous in risky situations. And third, that they do not interfere with non-risky situations. Warnings have two types, active and passive. Active warnings require immediate user interaction. This is useful where the threat is high or fairly certain and where interruption is possible and likely safe. Passive warnings do not interrupt and no user action is required. This is useful where something is less of a threat or the threat is highly uncertain. And second, where you need to have the action continue by default. You see a variety of messages on the screen. The ones that are active require people to click some sort of option, especially to get the notice off their screen. The one in the middle is passive because there is no button. It's simply there as a notification. This leads me to the idea of CHIP, which is the Communication Human Information Processing Model. This is an attempt to show what happens in the entire process of communication. And so we see here, um, it's not just about the sender, it's about the receiver. The receiver is who determines if it's actually understood. So first of all, do they notice the indicators and they need to switch their attention and maintain that switch? Do they comprehend what the indicators mean? And attitudes and beliefs are important. For instance, do they believe the indicators? Do they think this is legitimate? And are they motivated to take the recommended actions if needed? And finally, the last question we have is, will they actually perform those actions? So there are several problems we could have with warnings that will interrupt this model. First of all, if they see a lot of false positives and so users learn to ignore them. Second, if they don't increase the user's ability to comprehend and judge the risk. Third, if they're not action oriented and usually some sort of call to action, even with a passive warning is recommended. And fourth, if the users aren't just not equipped to make good decisions. We do get a lot of habituation to warnings and we see a lot of pop-up fatigue online. And in psychology, we know that increased exposure to a stimulus will reduce your physiological or emotional response. And the end result is that we pay less attention to something we see regularly. And Will Galter wrote in a 2006 paper, habituation can occur even with well-designed warnings, but better designed warnings with salient features can slow the habituation process. 
So one solution we've come up with is to use attractors. So we can automate parts of these messages using visual cues, and we can also highlight and reveal content progressively. Finally, we can require interactions such as a swipe or typing in a field. All of this is going to increase people's engagement with these messages. Well, thank you for listening. I'll see you in class.